um, when we lock down a ward, um, there is no in or out movement from that ward. Uh, so there is restricted movements for patients and staff only for very essential uh, testing. For example, they require a test in our, our radiology department. And even then, when we do move them, we take full precautions in moving them. Um, but in all essence, there is strict restrictions on entry into the ward, so we will not admit any further patients into that ward, and we will have a dedicated group of staff taking care of those patients in the ward. Um, so that is essential for us to put a barrier here to make sure that we keep uh, the patients in the ward safe as well as keep those outside the ward safe as well. So within the wards, there are enhanced infection control procedures. The staff take extra precaution in ensuring that they will care for these patients while protecting themselves. And we have to monitor them very closely, both our staff and our patients, so that we can pick up um, any spread very quickly and we can contain that as soon as possible. For the close contacts, of the cases in those wards that have been locked down. For those close contacts, they will be transferred into isolation. Right? So they are not within the lockdown wards. The lockdown wards are for the other patients. And so far, the first swab testing that we've done for all the patients in those four wards um, have been negative so far. So we will have to continue to monitor them because they are not out of the risk period and we have to keep them safe while we monitor them. So when we choose to lock down a ward, the decision is very much because there may have been some movement of patients or there may have been a confirmed case in that ward. Um, earlier, DMS mentioned 9C and that's why we have chosen to lock down 9C as well and we, have, we will quickly then test all the other patients and move the close contacts into isolation immediately. Um, so that's what happens with a lockdown ward. 